Hi, I'm Matt from allaboutcoins.co.uk and Coin Collector Magazine. In this video, we speak to Rebecca Morgan. She's the head of collector services at the Royal Mint. Uh, we asked Rebecca about her career and her role um, at the Mint in Wales, and also a little bit about the issuing policy of the Royal Mint and the collect and collecting services, what they provide. So the um, analysis and valuation of coins that the experts uh, can provide to collectors. So thanks to Rebecca for her time. And just before we go into that interview, I wanted to mention a brand new publication. Um, as you can see, it's called Collect Modern Coins. This is a souvenir guide uh, to all the 50p, two pound and 10p coins, uh, the, those commemorative coins that have been put into circulation. So inside we've got checklists, um, we've got mintages, we've got valuations of every single commemorative coin that's been issued over the past, um, well, 50 years, really. Um, there's also in-depth expert advice from uh, the experts at Change Checker, who um, helped us with the publication. Uh, there's space for you to write notes. There's lots and lots of different checklists. So it really is um, a fantastic uh, publication and it's available now. There's one of the checklists there, if you can see that on the camera, the 50p checklist there. Um, so it's available right now over on the website at allaboutcoins.co.uk. You can also get it digitally um, if you want to. All the information is on the website, um, so do have a look. But in the meantime, here's our chat with Rebecca Morgan. OK, so um, first of all, I wonder if you could kind of tell us how you got involved um, at the Royal Mint and a bit about your background. So this is always quite a funny story. Uh, I would tell anybody that um, is looking to to progress their career or to decide what they want to do when they're older. Um, it, it's never a linear path as it was with me. So um, I actually started off life in marketing. I've got a degree in business and a master's in marketing. And, ha and I um, went on to become a marketing manager, which I, I really enjoyed. And then I had my first child and decided I wanted to work part time for a bit, of which it was quite difficult in marketing. So then I um, accidentally became a secretary of the board of, of a golf club. Um, because okay. I thought I was just becoming a secretary, but turns out I was actually running the club, which I was quite okay. surprised about. Right. <laughs> so I became a secretary board of a golf club, and um, I'm actually a treasurer of the golf club, and ran that for four years, and really enjoyed that as well. Then I did some work with the Welsh Assembly government, supporting some local community centres, and then the job at the Royal Mint came up. But actually, it wasn't in um, historics because that wasn't a business then; it was in HR. Um, as the internal comms and engagement manager, which is something I'm really passionate about. So um, I managed to get the job in that department, absolutely loved it. Um, then had my second daughter and Anne, who is now our CEO, um, yeah. at the time was in, in charge of HR. So she um, asked me if I would consider starting a business within the Royal Mint, a new business, a new business stream. And would I lead the project? So um, after much discussions, I decided I'd give it a go. And that was when Collector Services was born. Uh, from a question we asked ourselves a few years ago about how else we could better serve collectors. Uh, and the business started four years ago, and, and now here I am as the director of that business. Excellent. So um, as head of Collector Services, how would you kind of describe a typical day? What, kind, what does your role kind of involve? So as the director um, across, we're part of a consumer business, there's precious metals and commemorative as well. So I work in a team um, with both of those directors, but my team, my collector services team, a typical day involves speaking to collectors pretty much all day um, and, um, and finding out how we can give them a collection with a purpose, how we can enhance their collections. So sometimes that's um, as simple as a coin, I say simple, as a coin finder service where they're looking for a particular coin. My team will go out and find that coin. Um, or it might be helping them create their collection into a bit more of an organised way so that they can, they can fill gaps in that collection. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's talking about the authentication and valuation of their coins and, um, and helping them make decisions on, on, on selling them or enhancing that collection to, to a larger one or even moving into a new direction. Excellent. OK, so when people think of, of the Royal Mint, they tend to think of more modern coins. 
and obviously we'll we'll discuss those but there, there's also more historic coins as well that you deal with is that right yeah so we're actually 1100 years old as a brand we're um i think the oldest organization in the uk and i think some the second oldest in the world we're we're very um established i think you can say yeah. Uh, we actually struck these historic coins originally. So, you know, over a thousand years ago, these coins were struck by the Royal Mint. So mm -hmm. that is how we came up with the idea that we should be involved in this market, because we, who better to help you understand and curate your collection than the people who originally struck the coins. Yeah. So we we deal, obviously, my team deal constantly in the historic um, area. So Tudor coins, Hammered coins. Um, Una and the Lion, uh, the Gothic Crown, um, and then all the all the coins in between, from circulating right up to sort of more modern commemoratives as well, as well that are no longer available on the primary market. Um, and yeah, so we've been doing that for four years. It's we've always done it in a little bit where our customers have asked us to do it, but um, we've we've had it as a business for the last four years, and that's um, really gone from strength to strength. And you'd be surprised how many people were collecting historic coins uh, way before we decided to start getting involved yeah yeah excellent okay so how do you think the um the kind of the attitude or yeah the attitude to collecting circulation coins how do you think that's changed more recently i'm not sure it has changed really i mean every collector we ever talk to new and old says that they started from collecting the coins and they changed and, and we know I, I must have heard it a hundred times uh, where people have said they've just noticed something in their hand. Oh, that's a different design. Or quite often, wow, that's my birth date uh, on a coin. And that has sparked an interest in the reverses of coins. And usually then, obviously, collecting from your change is really accessible because it's something that you already have. And that usually sparks an interest. But that's not true for everybody. For some people, um, it's a theme or an era sparks an interest, something you'd never find in your change. So people are interested in 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 history in certain monarchs or certain periods of time or military even uh, spanning mm -hmm. the coins uh, across um, the wars. So there's lots of different ways people get into collecting coins, though we do know that starting the change is by far um, the most popular. Yeah, excellent. That's really encouraging to know that that people, you know, can see something in their change today and then it, it can lead to to them it's kind of exploring the hobby even more that's really really good to know absolutely and um you know coins have got a shelf life of you know, a life cycle of around 30 to 40 years okay. so even if there are less coins going into circulation now there's still an abundance of designs out there that people can get really um interested in so yeah fantastic Okay, so um, one of the questions I had moving on to more modern coins was how how does the Royal Mint balance the need to put coins out for practical reasons um, into circulation, and how do you kind of balance that with with coming up with commemorative designs? So again, like I said, people collect for different reasons, and um, commemorative coins have been around a lot longer, I think, than people realise. Yeah. Uh, obviously, a lot of historic coins are actually circulated in coins that were used as many um, back in the in the day. But the they also had commemorative coins even as far back as as Victoria, as Queen Victoria. So um, there's always been a balance of commemorative versus circulating. Even when circulating was the only payment method, even when cash was the only payment method you could use. I think, you know, circulating demand comes from uh, the public. So the Treasury will will de determine how many coins need to go into circulation of any one denomination, depending on demand. As you can imagine, that peaks and troughs around things like Christmas and when people are spending um, a lot more. But there's an importance, you know, there's an importance for us as well to make sure that our collectors always have something to collect. And quite a lot of people start collecting around themes that are not, not necessarily circulating coins. Like I've already mentioned, so around monarchs or around, um, I mean, obviously some more, more popular culture things like music legends. People mm -hmm. are really interested in collecting coins for a myriad of reasons. So the balance between commemorative and circulating has always been there, um, and I think that um, it's great when they can be both. But there's, it's really important that we continue those collections to allow our collectors to continue doing what they love and continue their collection and the theme that they that they enjoy. Yeah, OK. I and mean, that, that kind of leads me on to another a question about, you know, some people, uh, some collectors would say that Royal Mint produced too many um, uncirculated coins on themes. So how would you kind of address that? 
I think it's a difficult balance uh, that we've talked about before because collectors want to collect. And if those coins aren't or those designs aren't going into circulation, it's important we give them a route in order to be able to continue their collections. So um, if we if we only went by demand of circulating coin, then there'd be a very limited amount of, of things that we could produce. And that would mean there'd be a very limited amount of things people could collect. And nothing makes a collector more unhappy than not being able to collect. Um, yeah. I tell you yeah. that. So, um, so yeah, a dedication to obviously continuing themes that people like to collect means that, again, we try to keep an eye on that balance. But um, so far, it's worked out quite well. Yeah, perfect. OK. And um, also the the 10 P's that were released uh, a couple of years ago really kind of sparked people's imagination. Um, and I think you know, you'd be very lucky to find one of them now because uh, collectors have found them all, which is it's just great. Do you think um, the Royal Mint have any plans to do anything similar in the future? I mean, it, it, you know, those kind of things are fantastic. Like you've said, it's the same as Kew Gardens. You know, Kew Gardens, you, if you find one of those in your change now, you'd be a very lucky person. The, the 210,000 that went into circulation, I suspect 209,000 are sitting in people's collections. Yeah. Um, and, you know, any time that there's an interest, the same with the Diversity Build Britain coin and the, and the, the, um, the, the EU leave in um, coin, the Brexit coin, they are also you know, really rearing your change. So again, that's really, that's great for collectors. They love that because they will dedicate their time to be trying to be one of the lucky ones that finds it. So any opportunity would be get to do that. But like I said, cash is demanded from the, you know, the public and the, and the treasury. And our job is to just make sure we, we've got that cash ready. So any opportunity would be great. Yeah. Are you, do you think uh, you and your colleagues are, are sometimes surprised at the, the reaction to coins? So like the Brexit coin, um, I know quite a, it was quite a large mintage, um, but but it's hard to find one now. Is is that kind of surprising, or do you do you kind of predict those things? Well, it's it's hard to predict them. I would say I think I'd have a much easier job if I could predict them. Mm. Um, but um, I would say that you know coins have always marked moments in history. So when you think of significant moments in history, it's hardly surprising that those yeah. coins have disappeared from circulation because people love to use coins to mark mark moments in time. And, you know, it, it's the same with historic coins. When people start collecting those, it's all about the times um, that those coins were, were used, whose hands they could have passed through, what history they saw. And even now with modern coins, people like to mark the occasion with a coin because it's a, it's a tangible reminder of, of a moment in history. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. OK, so um, coming back to collectors and obviously you say you, you're dealing with collectors on a day to day basis. What kind of queries do you get from the public? And, um, you know, have there been any interesting ones? <laughs> We get a lot. Of, you you wouldn't be surprised to find that we get a lot of the same queries. We get a lot of questions about mintages. We get yeah. lots of questions like the ones you've asked me today about you know cash going in and designs going into circulation, uh, and we get lots and lots of queries about the history of coins, especially in my department. So. You know, we're specialists, my team are specialists, more so than I, um, in, in understanding history and numismatic history. And we've also got, luckily, the Royal Mint Museum, who, you know, have the archives dating back to 860 AD on the coins that we've struck. And quite often we'll get uh, queries about uh, this unusual coin or, you know, when was this struck or... Um, do you, can you tell me a little more, bit more about this? And then obviously we've got an authentication evaluation service. So we get quite a lot through there where people are checking that the coin is genuine uh, because they may have their doubts for some reason um, or um, finding out, you know, I've just found this coin in my grandmother's drawer. Can you tell me a little bit about it? And, and you know, it turns out to be a £30,000 uh, value of a coin that they were just about to probably throw into the uh, into the into the bin. So, yes, never never the uh, never a dull day. But uh, yes, really interesting questions from all of our collectors, and they they challenge us a lot sometimes as well, which is great. Yeah, I can imagine. So, um, if if someone wanted to authenticate a coin, what's the kind of process they would would go through? Do they have to send the coin to you? For a full authentication, yes. So um, we've got two levels of authentication, a, a standard and an advanced. And for both of those, you need to send them in. For evaluation, that can be done online. So you can go to our website and you can send a picture of the coin and we can say, assuming the coin is genuine, it's this coin and it's between X, it's worth between X and X. 
um, mm -hmm. depending on its quality. So we can give you a ballpark figure of valuation. If you actually want the coin authenticated, it is um, quite a, a robust process. So we use the latest technology, an XRF machine that checks the composition of the metal. We compare right. that composition of metal with the original archives from the Royal Mint Museum to check that that is the exact composition of metal that should be in a genuine coin. And then there's all sorts of other tests, water density tests, mill counts. Um, we do a great deal of, um, you know, non-abrasive um, investigation into the coin, compare it to our original archives, and then we will tell you if we are satisfied this coin is, is a genuine coin. And if you go for the advanced authentication, then we will also find some history on sort of the dyes that we use or anything interesting um, about that coin in particular. So most people who've got quite high value coins will go for the more advanced authentication because sometimes there'll be slight marks on the coin that can give you an indication of, of what dye it was used or what batch number it came out of um, and a little bit more information about it so um so yeah really popular service for us yeah yeah excellent and is that limited to just uh british coins british post decimal co uh, pre-decimal coins yes because uh, obviously that's what we're specialists in yeah. we're the voice of authority in british coinage uh, we d I always say we don't just know them, we struck them. So we can't, uh, I don't think you can know yeah. more than us when it comes to British coinage. Um, yeah, so that's what the authentication evaluation is limited to, is is British struck coins. But obviously, if they buy their historic coins directly from us, they're already pre-authenticated by the Royal Mint and guaranteed to be genuine. But the, this is usually for people who bought coins before we started doing this or have bought them elsewhere and would like to um, check that they are genuine. Yeah, of course. OK, fantastic. So uh, do you have any tips for for um, for collectors collecting modern coins and also um, perhaps, you know, those those people that have got older coins somewhere, you know, up in their attic or, or somewhere at home? Have you got any I've, tips you want to give to people? Yeah, I've got loads of tips I could give to people. <laughs> but uh, the main one I say that my team strive for is to help people will collect, you know, a great people who collect for love will collect I like the look of this one, I like the design of this, I like the colour of this one. And quite often they'll have a mis mishmash of coins, which is great. Your collection should bring you joy. And if that brings you joy, that is fantastic. Um, but quite often my team will work to say, actually, did you realise you've got sort of three of this and four of this? And if you bought these three in the centre, then you'd have a run of monarchs, you know, one yeah. from every monarch. Or did you realise you've got four of the Edward the Seven Sovereigns and if you collect these five you'll have the full set and so it's quite nice to give a collection a purpose so if it's military mm. coins or if it's um, a certain year date, a certain monarch, a certain era it's nice to be able to say these are my collection of um, whatever coins but yeah. really my top tip is to love love what you're collecting if you love a mishmash of coins you carry on collecting just what draws your eye um, but when you're, you're looking to build something for the future, maybe then a collection with a purpose is, is, is what we, we say to do. And that can take any form. It can be silver, it can be gold, it can be sovereigns, it can be sixpences. It really doesn't matter. Um, and then for modern coins, um, again, same sort of thing. Try, and, try to get a theme going. Again, if it's something you love, it's a classic denomination like 50Ps or if that is um, sovereigns. And then just look after your coins is my is my top tip. If you've got them bashing around in a drawer somewhere and you decide to start collecting, get yourself a little album. They're quite cost effective. They're about £10. Mm -hmm. uh, where at least you can slip them in there. Don't clean your coins, uh, please. Is <laughs> my one request. Unless they're being professionally cleaned. By professionally, I mean hardly touched. Um, not by somebody who's offering professional cleaning. And uh, yeah, just just look after them and, and and try to learn about as much about them as you can, because like I said, they're small pieces of history. So there's lots of information out there. We've got I, God knows how much on our website, but there's also you know plenty of other sources out there to to learn about your coins and hopefully it'll it'll keep you interested in them. Brilliant. OK. And just finally, um, do you collect any of the coins yourself? Are you even allowed to? I guess it's a question. And do you have a favourite? design from the past yes so you, it's really hard not to collect when you work at the royal mint because you see miniature pieces of art being being made every single day and the process that goes into making a coin is absolutely you know astounding you know, the artistry and the craftsmanship so it's really difficult to not to be in love with them when you see the work that goes into them and um, so I, I didn't collect before i worked there i do collect now but i 
very careful not to take any out the door, otherwise I will be arrested. I buy, I buy them um, over the website. But um, I like to buy the sort of uh, pre-decimal coinage and talk to my to my dad about the stories, you know, yeah. the coins, what you could buy for, a, you know, a shilling, which always amazes me um, these days. Um, he'd have changed for a pound after going to the cinema and I'm buying fish and chips, which always used to make me laugh. Um, and so I like, I love anything to do with sort of my dad's sort of era. Um, yeah. And then uh, more modern, I collect some of the sovereigns, particularly ones with sort of, I collected the Victorian Albert Sovereign because it had a, a special cipher on it. And I collect generally from my change with my children. So we have all the albums because that's a fun yeah. way to do it. Um, and then my favourite coin is um, a very cliche because it's um, almost everyone's favourite coin who's ever worked in historics. But Una and the Lion um, yeah. is my favourite coin because it's... Um, just because of the story behind the design, and not, apart from the fact it's a beautiful coin um, and now becoming iconic in its own right. Um, but the story behind it, I think, is is really romantic as well. So I think I'm, again, coins are great tellers of stories. So when you've got a great story behind the coin, that is what um, what draws me to it. But the design is fantastic too. So a double whammy with the Una and the Lion. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. OK, well, Rebecca, thanks so much for your time today. Um, thanks for thanks for uh, having me. All that uh, knowledge and experience. Um, and um, yeah, thank you very much.